We have three presentations more, and the next is by Samuel Brown, who is the, at the Department of Polymers and Coatings, and he will uh, make another presentation on uh, metal nanoclusters and their optical properties. For yeah. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, as you mentioned, I'll be exploring the oxidation states for optic optically active silver nanoclusters. Um, so to begin with, I'm just going to describe uh, silver at different length scales. So um, here you can see we have silver in the bulk, just a silver metal block. And then this, if you look, is a TEM image of a silver nanoparticle. That's about uh, 6 nanometers in diameter. And then here's a the model that we'll be working with later, a silver nanocluster that's uh, only 13 atoms total. Um, and then here's the representative density of states for each one of these models. So, um, just kind of for reference of what we'll be looking at. Um, so because the density of states becomes discretized for the smaller nanocrystals, that allows for different optical transitions. And then work by Diaz and Ross showed that, um, one of the papers showed that you can actually get fluorescence from these models. And then with um, the nanoparticles that are slightly bigger, you can get surface plasmon resonance, which alters the absorbance properties. Um, in this presentation, though, we'll be focusing mainly on the silver nano um, clusters, the very small ones, that can be optically active. Um, so here is a um, molecular dynamics room temperature of the model that we'll be going over. So it's a silver nano cluster with 13 atoms, making up the core of the silver. And then it's passivated with um, 12 cytosine um, molecules. So typically, when they synthesize these in the lab, they use DNA as a scaffolding material. So for this case, we're using cytosine as the representative scaffolding. Let um, me interrupt you right away. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, um, do you know the structure? Is it known experimentally for that it's really sitting uh, atoms in the silver? And also, what the conformation silver has? Is it experimentally known, or you just took this structure because I you need some to start? something just to start with. Okay, yes. so no experimental data on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we wanted to do first was just explore the different oxidation states and charges of the system to see if we can find the lowest energy. And when we did that, we found that the lowest energy was at a charge about um, negative 500, which is extremely low. Um, so we decided to kind of um, explore a different area. So we went and looked at the charges around the um, neutral state. And looking at this, we can see that um, we get a deviation from the parabolic function we saw earlier to a quadratic function here with a um, Inflection point around negative six. Um, this inflection point doesn't give us a whole lot. I looked at the density states around it, and it seems to be similar. But um, looking at these models, we then explored the band gap for these ones, which is here. So I, I didn't mention we looked at different uh, spins of zero, one, two, and three. So this is spin zero, one, two, and three, and then we looked at the band gap for all these different oxidation states, and for um, high oxidation states from about three to 10 in these models, we can see that the band gap considerably widens to about 2 eV. And um, since we did this for both alpha and beta electrons, we may multiply the band gap of the beta electrons by negative 1, so that's why we have a negative band gap here. Um, looking at the models um, that were optically active and had a band gap in the previous one, we then um, I just we plotted the, the band gap, the, the homo lumo energy for these different states, which is here. So you can see for higher oxidation states, plus 11. Five, that both the homo and lumo energy drop, and that's pretty much it.